Hi friends, welcome back to Edipedia World. Last lecture, we started discussing about electrical energy. We saw what is the formulas for electrical energy and electrical power and we touched upon the SI units of both of them. Today's discussion will continue from where we left in the last lecture and we will begin by studying the commercial units of energy, basic, uh, fundamentally of electrical energy. We will see what is known as watt hour and kilowatt hour. We will see their equivalence with joule. Then we will see what is the rating of appliance, how is the rating of appliance done and what information can be extracted from that rating. And uh, we will conclude the lecture by studying what is known as Joule's law of heating. That is for a given resistance how much energy is produced in the form of heat energy. Uh, we'll see those things in details in today's class. So let's start with today's lecture. Let us now see commercial units which are popularly used for electrical energy. We have seen the basic unit that is Joule but the commercial unit is a bit different. The commercial unit of electrical energy uses the idea that the work done or the energy the energy can be written as a product of power and time. So the commercial unit uses this concept. Let us see how. Electrical energy is written in terms of what is known as watt hour, watt hour, WH or kilowatt hour, kilowatt hour or KWH. Now at the first glance you might think that there is a watt it should be related with power but how come it is uh, related with energy. The idea is here we are using both the unit of power and the unit of time and since this is a product ultimately we are getting a unit of energy right that is the basic concept behind it. With this idea let us see how much exactly is one watt hour and how much exactly is one kilowatt hour in the standard unit of joules. Let us begin with one watt hour. So one watt hour can be written as one watt multiplied by one hour. But we know that one joule is one watt times one second because the SI units of power is watt and time is second. It's not hour. Therefore, in order to convert it into in terms of joule, we have to convert this thing as watt second rather than watt hour. We already have watt here. So all we need to do is convert this into seconds. So this can be equated as let me keep one watt separately and see how much one hour is in terms of second. So one hour is 60 minutes and each minute has 60 seconds. So 60 times 60 second that is one hour. This turns out to be 3600 second. Therefore combining the whole thing we get 3600 watt times multiplied by second and watt second is exactly equal to joule. So we can write it as 3600 joule. Therefore we calculated one watt, watt hour as 3600 joule. Right? So the electrical commercial unit one watt hour is 3600 joule. Now what will be one kilowatt hour? One kilowatt hour is 1000 watt hour the kilo so 1000 and we have already calculated that one watt hour is 3600 joule 
So this I can write as 3.6 times 10 to the power 3 joule. If I replace this here, then what I get is 10 to the power 3 multiplied by 3.6 times 10 to the power 3 and that turns out to be 3.6 into 10 to the power 6 joule. So what kilowatt hour is 3.6 times 10 to the power 6 joule and 1 watt hour is 3.6 times 10 to the power 3 joule. Fine. Now with this background I want to make it a point that this unit the 1 kilowatt hour unit is the commercial unit based on which the electricity bill comes to your house. Normally what you will see if you see your electricity bill you will have something like uh, 150 units of electricity used. So what 150 units means is that you used 150 kilowatt hour of electricity for that month and if one unit costs let's say rupees 3 just for sake of argument let's assume that one unit costs, costs 3 rupees Therefore, your bill for the month would be 150 times 3, that is 450 rupees for that particular month. So, the, it is a standard to use kilowatt hour as the reporting unit of your bill. And uh, they don't normally need to mention, they just mention this many units of electricity bus were consumed by you. Fine. Now, let us see something which is known as the power rating of common electrical appliances. We have seen several terms. Let me do it here. We have seen watt, that is power. We have seen how much joule energy we have seen the current flowing, we have seen the resistance, the potential difference. So there are many variant, uh, varieties of units in which a system can be reported. But how is a system actually reported? A system, let's say you have a geyser, a uh, water geyser or an iron. How is the appliance rated? So normally what you will find is they are rated like this 110 watt 220 volt something like this so what they do is they mention you the wattage and the voltage so the appliance will consume 110 watt of power if 220 volt of potential difference is supplied to it. Normally in India 220 volt is the supply voltage to the house. So if there is no voltage fluctuation that is the voltage is at 220 volt then the device will consume 110 watt of energy per second. But say your house voltage fluctuates and uh, let's say it dropped down to 200 volt then what will happen? Then your power usage by the device will go down. Conversely, if the voltage of your house supply goes higher, let's say 230 volt, then the power consumption by the device will increase. So these are not stagnant, they are correlated. Depending on what is the power voltage supply, the power will vary. But there has to be something which has to be constant, right? So the thing which is constant for a device is its resistance. Isn't it? Because the resistance is the material property and the property of the resistor, how, what is the dimension of the resistor, the length, the area of cross section as we saw previously. So it really does not depend on what is the voltage that is being supplied by the electrical company. It has to be independent because it depends on the specific component we are looking at. Now if you remember, we have power as Vi or I square R or V square by R. 
So if we use this relation, power is v square upon r, right? Then we can find the resistance. Therefore, what we can get is resistance for this particular element will be equal to v square upon p. And that will turn out to be, for calculating the resistance, we'll use this standard values. And then we will calculate the 110. We will calculate the resistance. For this element, it will turn out to be 440 ohms. And then use this resistance to calculate the power consumption under different voltage supplies. Fine. Also, using this formula, we can find out what is the current that flows under the standard condition. Right. How, how can we do that? We can use this. So, what will be the current? I will be P by V. And that turns out to be 0 0.5 amperes. So, 0 0.5 ampere is the current rating for that particular device. Now, if the current flowing through the device becomes more than 0 0.5 due to any reason, maybe the voltage increases or something, then the chances are that the device will have some problem and it will break down. So, this value which we obtained here is ideally considered the safe value for the device to operate in terms of the current. So, this is the current rating if I may say. Fine. So, this gives you an idea about how exactly the devices are marked and using that information, how can we find the constants? How can we find what is the ideal current uh, that should be supplied? The voltage that should be supplied? But if in case the voltage supplied is different, then how does that affect our power and every other rating? Okay, let us close uh, today's lecture with one final note, the, what is known as the heating effect of current. If we use a resistor as a heating element, then how much will it heat? How much heat will be produced by the element? That can be defined by several factors. Let me write heat as H. So, that will depend on how much square of how much current is flowing. To begin with, let me write the formulas of energy. Energy is V i t i square r t v square by r times t. So, for a particular device, the resistance will be constant. Therefore, given the resistance is constant, the heating effect will be proportional to I square. Also, the heating effect will be proportional to resistance. Higher the resistance, higher will be the heat produced. And finally, the heating factor will be proportional to how long we are allowing the electricity to pass through it or how long is it used as a heating element. So, proportional to time. So, combining this, Again, we get the heating factor or the heat generated by a resistance or a heating element is I square times R times T, which is the same as the energy in terms of IRT. Fine. Now, obviously, when uh, there is heating, in ideal scenario, we will get this. But in real scenario, there will be losses of energy, which we cannot use to heat. But that will be either given in the question what percentage of heat is lost. If it is not given, we will assume that 100% of heat is utilized to actually heat. Okay. And this is known as Joule's law of heating. Of heating. Fine. So, to wrap up, we uh, read about a lot of things today. It, we started by discussing the electrical energy consumed and electrical power consumed. Then we saw the commercial units of power, its equivalence in the SI unit. Then we saw how is the power rating of uh, common electrical equipments done. And then finally we closed 
by seeing the Joule's law of heating and found that H is equal to I square RT is same as the energy produced I square RT. Next class, we will see numericals based on all the theory we studied today. So till next class, have a great day. Goodbye.